This episode is brought to you by Wear Buff, your go-to for Buffalo-inspired apparel. Get your hands on stylish t-shirts, hoodies, and more at wearbuff.com. That's W-E-A-R-B-U-F dot com. And make sure you use the promo code TWB at checkout for 10% off your first order. Stay Buffalo proud with Wear Buff. Taking a look at some of my observations from training camp day two, this week on the Wandering Buffalo podcast. And now listening to the Wandering Buffalo podcast with your host, Justin Godford. Bills Mafia, welcome into another episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast, a show on the Buffalo Fan Base Podcast Network. My name is Justin, and I will be your host today. Uh, this show is brought to you by Wear Buff. Uh, we've been talking about Wear Buff for a while now. If you haven't done so, check it out. We have links to it right from our website. Just awesome t shirts coming out, uh, merchandise, other stuff. Um, the website, we have articles. Um, some new stuff going up um, throughout the off season, so make sure you're checking that out. Um, got a pretty good show today, I think. Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to get tickets to one of the training camp practices. Um, my amazing wife Leanne um, kind of put together like as early birthday gifts. Um, turned out to be like a Bills themed week. Um, so on Thursday, we were able to go to the training camp practice. Um, and then on Friday, um, she had got me tickets for the upper deck golf at, um, Highmark stadium. I always want to call it the Ralph. <laughs> um, but so that was my two days there. Um, so apologies for the delay in recording, but I was out doing bills related things. Um, thank you to my wife for those amazing surprises. Um, Training camp over at Fisher. Um, I love having training camp there. I know there's arguments for and against it being there. Um, I, I've done the training camp when they have it out in Archard, Orchard Park, and I've done a ton of them at St. John Fisher. And I just love the atmosphere Atmosphere at St. John Fisher. It's, it's like... You know, the way the stands are set up and everything, it, it's almost like you're watching, like, a high school team. It, it, they're, the players are so much more accessible. You're so close to the action. You know, things aren't happening super far away. It's all kind of right in front of you. Um, so always a great time there. And we were able to take in the practice. I, I know those tickets are kind of hard to get right now. Um, with the lottery system, but we were fortunate enough to get tickets. Um, and just kind of great to be back out there and, and feel like we're getting close to football. Uh, I know we still have another month or so till, you know, the live stuff is happening. Um, but as you kind of get into training camps across the league, you start seeing, you know, actual football news and, you can start actually getting ready for the season versus, you know, this this past month we had of, you know, no transactions going on, you know, no practices. The only news you're really getting from any teams across the league is, like, who's getting in trouble and then a whole bunch of conjecture and rankings lists and all that kinds of stuff. Um, so I just wanted to share some of my, my observations at the camp. Um, and this was from day two of training camp. Um, there was a lot of the, the practice going on, on like the far field, um, where, you know, fans couldn't get over there. You could get over kind of close to the fence, but you couldn't really see what was going on very much. I assume that's kind of, you know, tucked away there, maybe doing some like playbook installs, things like that, you know, didn't, didn't want cameras on it. Um, and then ton of positional work. Um, the, the team portions of the practice were pretty short for this one. Um, but some players that were standing out to me, um, if you've listened to the show, Cedric Van Pran Granger is somebody that I'm very excited for. And I, I am, intrigued to see what 
what his path looks like this year and going forward. Um, and as, as far as my untrained eyes go for like watching offensive linemen stuff, um, he looked like he was pretty solid to me. Um, a little more stout maybe than Mitch Morse, a little bit more power. Um, and, and he, he was holding his own out there. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for him. Um, Kian Coleman and Josh Allen, I know that's the one everybody wants to know about. Um, through kind of throwing against air when we got into team portions of things, um, the, the connection was there early and often. And, you know, when Coleman was drafted and he was kind of like this 50-50 ball receiver, all that kind of stuff that was coming out about him, um, if you listen to this show, you know I have had my reservations about uh, Keon Coleman. Um, they were connecting all over the field. It looked like he was showing, you know, like a nice knowledge of where the soft spots were in the zone. He was running short, intermediate, deep routes, had some impressive catches. Um, through the early part of the team drills, it looked like he was already, you know, becoming that go-to option for Josh Allen. He was looking for him. They had a connection. Um, another one, Curtis Samuel. Um, I've been very excited for this addition since it's happened. Um, I think he's a receiver that's got, you know, an amazing skill set and has been stuck with just really bad quarterback play for a long time. Uh, teamed up again with Joe Brady. Uh, we're going to see this guy deployed in in all kinds of ways. Um, he was lining up outside, inside, taking carries from the backfield, screens out of the backfield, um, motions. He was moving all over the formation. Um, so, you know, maybe like wide receiver 1B, 1A, whatever you want to call it. Um, this this is kind of like looking like the Isaiah McKenzie role on steroids for me, and that's kind of something I've always wanted to see with the Bills um, is just that guy that can hurt you with speed. He can hurt you anywhere on the field, and <clears throat> they're going to give him his opportunities to go out there, get the ball, and create. Um, so super excited for when we go live in preseason and regular season, just looking at the usage of Curtis Samuel and what he's going to be able to do with Josh Allen. Um, I think, I think a lot of people in Bill's mafia understand like how special that connection can be. I think when we get to like a national media level, um, the wide receiver group as a whole is really being slept on. Um, not hearing a ton of people national media wise, you know, really talking about Curtis Samuel and what he can be as a receiver and, you know, what he's capable of with some actual NFL caliber quarterback play. Um, so super excited to see what that ends up looking like. Um, the other guy that kept catching my eye and uh, honestly being live in person and seeing these dudes up close, it's kind of hard to ignore. Um, but Matt Collins from, you know, how big he is to coming out on the field barefoot. He had his, uh, undershirt, you know, all cut up and had frills on it. He was out there dancing and then the, the helmet came on and he started running routes and he was getting open all over the place and it looked like a really great possession receiver out there. He had routes. He was getting open deep. Um, he was catching con contested balls. Um, I think this one for, for me was kind of like, uh, okay, this is you know, Trent Shearfield replacement, you know, he's been a special teams captain everywhere. It's going to be, you know, your, your high end special teams, you know, depth receiver. 
Um, and just watching him throughout practice, I, I think he's going to have a much bigger role than than I anticipated. Um, we'll see how it all shakes out, but he was impressive out there during training camp. Um, Khalil Shakir, somebody that I was watching you know, just as closely as any of these other receivers. Um, I feel like he didn't have, like, crazy highlight plays or anything that was, like, really drawing the eyes. Um, but a lot of stuff underneath, a lot of a lot of catches. Um, he's kind of somebody that the, the tail end of last season, seeing what he was doing out there, um, his big playability after getting the ball on his hands. He's not the person that I was super focused on. I was kind of more focused on some of these new additions to the team and, and what they looked like and, and what I think I can expect from them. Um, I will note here as well, kind of missed this note that I had. Keon Coleman did have a fumble. Um, and there was also a fumble from Ray Davis. Um, it's early in training camp. Things that will need to be tightened up. We got to have the ball security. Um, Ray Davis's fumble was, it was like just the offense running reps and it was on a toss play and he just dropped it in the backfield. Um, but watching Ray Davis throughout the remainder of practice, um, I'm super excited for Ray Davis. Um, a lot of, you know, plant the foot and get downhill, um, getting yards, and, you know, none of these situations are tackling situations. It's kind of tap them up type deal. Um, but the head of steam that he was coming through the hole with on some of these plays where, you know, it gets blown dead. Um, tell you what, I didn't have very confidence in the first guy getting him down. Um Again, super early in training camp. Don't want to get too bold with predictions and whatnot. Um, but for kind of the for the talent level that James Cook has, and you know, kind of being an incomplete skill set between the tackles and after contact and things like that, um, Ray Davis's ability to catch the ball out of the backfield and kind of just his running style, and then we look at you know. We're going to have to be looking at, do we give James Cook another contract coming up soon? Um, if, if I were kind of going bold prediction time here, I would say by the end of the season, maybe we see Ray Davis start out snapping James Cook and Cook gets to be in a more specialized, you know, receiving outside the tackles, you know, cut down on some of his snaps and, and really get, full use of him throughout the season. Um, like I said, we haven't even seen a preseason game yet, so way too early to be making these predictions, but I was super impressed with Ray Davis um, throughout the practice. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, I know one of the positions that I'm looking at and most curious about is the safety position. Um now we've gone through three days of practices thus far, and the the starters have been kind of rotating. Everybody's been getting their chance. Um, on Thursday, it was Mike Edwards and Taylor Rapp getting the start. Um, didn't really see a ton of, you know, big plays either, you know, for or against them throughout the period. Um, so I, I guess that's kind of a no news is good news type deal, but also nothing really, really splashing going on. Um, in the splash department, um, didn't see a ton of reps from Von Miller, but some of the reps that I did see from him, he looks like he's got some juice again. Um, I saw at least one would be sack. There was one that he was super close on. Um, it seemed like he was, kind of rotating in more with um, Groot and Epinesa taking, you know, the majority of the first team reps. Um, if we can have him in that capacity and be just kind of like a pass rush special, 
pass rush special specialist. Jeez. Um, I think honestly, that might be the best position to get what we need out of Von Miller and not have him playing every other, every down, just kind of let him pin his ears back and go after the quarterback. Um, if we get like 75% of what we are getting from Von Miller pre-injury, that's going to be a great impact for this team. Um, the other guys across the defensive line that I saw make some, some splash plays, um, Epinesa was in the backfield quite a few times. He, one of the things that I've always loved about Epinesa is his kind of, his pass rush feel, or like when he realizes that he's not getting home, he kind of tracks the ball, the quarterback's eyes, and he gets his hands up and he breaks up a ton of passes. Um, he had one on a screen pass during practice that it, it went right between his arms um, would have loved to see him come come away with that, maybe take it the other way. Uh, but it ended up going for a screen pass. Um, Milano got over there, wrapped up real quick, really no gain on the play. Um, Deshaun Williams was in there, had a, a would-be sack. Saw DeMar Hamlin with uh, a would-be sack back there. Now, I believe this one was against Josh Allen. Um, it's hard to keep all of it right in my head when they're rotating in and out and I'm taking notes and trying to just watch and all that. Um, I call it a would-be sick, but, you know, there's no guarantee that DeMar Hamlin's got Josh Allen down in the backfield. We know how Josh is. Um, Groot also had a a batted pass in there. Dwayne Smoot had a would-be sack. Um, So I thought this day was kind of, Overall, pretty even for the offense and defense. Both sides of the ball had, you know, some wins, and there was there was no obvious disparity. You know, sometimes you see this time of year, you know, the offense is installing the playbook, so the defense is way ahead, or, you know, vice versa. Um, I thought it looked like a pretty even day. Um, now, kind of looking at some notes from the other practice sessions, um, it seems like day three, the offense was kind of, tearing up the defense and then towards the tail end of practice ended with basically three consecutive Allen interceptions. Um, We'll see it go back and forth throughout training camp and preseason. Um, But I'm personally pretty encouraged about what the offense is looking like right now with so much change. Um, You know, you're not just talking like losing Stefan Diggs. You're talking about the overhaul at receiver being, you know, Khalil Shakir being the only guy returning, um, fitting all those new bodies in, learning the playbook, getting the rhythm, getting the chemistry with Allen for being just day two of training camp. I thought Allen's connection looked really strong with all these new guys being brought in. I was really keeping an eye on is Matt Milano. Uh, to me out there, he, he looked like Matt Milano. Uh, he was all over the field. Uh, he had a pass breakup. I mentioned the screen earlier where the completion's made and he wraps him up, you know, for no gain. Um, <clears throat> he was all over the field. Um, I did see kind of a video breakdown from, if if you don't follow him already on Twitter, um, the Thigh Doctor. Uh, great stuff for, great page for, you know, following injuries. Um injury timelines kind of explaining more what some of these injuries have involved you know you hear for me I heard tibial plateau fracture and it's not a term I've ever heard before um, but he kind of breaks down what the recovery looks like what was all involved in the injury um, there was some video breakdown of you know Milano being a bit hesitant on on the leg that was injured and, you know, not wanting to plant and press off of it. And, you know, the whole comment section debating about what level of Milano will ever get again. And, you know, is he cooked? Is he washed? Blah, blah, blah. Um, For me watching the practice, it, it looked like Matt Milano. And, you know, if he 
<clears throat> does lose a half step from this injury or, you know, is still kind of working through it. Um, <clears throat> I think the intelligence and the way that he plays the game, um, even if you lose a half step from him, I think you're still getting a, a really great football player. Um, we'll see what happens there, I guess. Um, we did see on day three of camp, um, Dorian Williams got mixed in with some starting reps at linebacker. Um, so maybe kind of a little, a little cautious hedge there. Um, but something that we've talked about a lot on the show is kind of like where where the depth is at certain positions compared to last year. And linebacker was one that was really focused on this offseason. Um, so hopefully we can get every bit of Matt Milano that we know and love. Um, hopefully there's at least a nice contingency in place there if, if things go kind of sideways. Um <clears throat> But yeah, overall, it was a really fun day at camp. Um, I really enjoyed being out there. Broke my heart. I was hoping to get Josh Allen's autograph by the end of the day, but it did not happen. I did get a wave. and Not not me personally, you know, the whole side of the, the field I was on. <laughs> but take what we can get sometimes. Um, if you haven't, you know, gone to a training camp in the past or this year, um, Try to get some tickets and and just enjoy the atmosphere. It's really cool watching these guys work and, you know, what they put in day in and day out before we see the product on the field. Um, so try to get tickets. Check out the practice. Um, there's a ton of, like, merchandise there. There's areas for kids. Um, very kid-friendly atmosphere. Um, tons of players signing autographs after practice. Billy Buffalo there sign in taking pictures um so make sure you get out to train uh the training camp if you have the opportunity to um as always if you've made it this far in the episode i do ask that you like share subscribe tell a friend about the show help us keep bringing this episode every week um it does a ton to help us out um make sure you're checking out the website wherebuff.com wanderingbuff.com check out all the stuff um our producer Jake is putting in a ton of work on those ends. Um, check it out. See if you like anything. We have more training camp coming up. Um, I won't be at any more of the practices, but that's pretty much going to be our episodes until we kind of break for preseason. Um, going to be leaning a lot on the notes of the great media people that are out there. Uh, Perino, Capaccio, all those guys. Um, and kind of bring you more updates as we move through training camp. Um, we're pretty close to football, only about a month out. So make sure you're subscribed so you're catching all of our episodes every week. And as always, go Bills.